Hey, hello, and, and welcome to the Nal Share with Dr. Dave podcast. Um, I'm coming live from uh, the Tucson Festival of Books here, and, and we're down at the University of Arizona. And right now, we're down in the mall, and we're selling some books. So one of the things that I wanted to do today was really just start sharing and giving you some insights about some of the books that um, we do have uh, present. So um, maybe just a little bit about who I am. I'm an author and I've written about nine different books. And most of the books that I write is um, nonfiction and, and really uh, with an emphasis talking about business and, and just the way we operate and function within the business environment itself. But also, I've written a few fictional books, but really covering the concept and the context of of a business itself and and how uh, we operate within that space. So one of the first books that I want to talk about is Deliver Value. And so when I wrote Deliver Value, the whole concept was how do we talk about value in such a way that it, it really talks about the happy contributing people who are really doing all the work in the company, uh, how we talk about satisfied customers as well as a thriving business. So one of the things that we, we did in, in this book is really go out and have some interviews with different industry professionals, learning about their concept of what uh, you know, value really means. But so what, for us, when I, for, for me, when I talk about value, I'm talking about you know, um, values of measurable outcome that can be realized and shared, right? Value is a thing that's really super important uh, for us to provide for our customers, for the people who work for our company, and as well for the companies, um, and as well for the organization as well. So this book, Deliver Value, is one of the books that is available on Dr. Dave Duca. You could also find this book also on Amazon, and it has the various different formats that you could think of. So you could get it as a print format, you could get it as Kindle, you can get it as an audiobook, and it also has a hardcover. So there's options for you to, um, to tap into. Um, but one of the fun things about writing this book, Deliver Value, is, is that I, used, I created a fictional character. And so for this fictional character, um, I want to introduce you to Ashanti Muendo. Right? Ashanti um, is this fictional character that I wrote about. And in, in terms of how do we express and, and talk about different business concepts in such a way that it's easy for people to understand, it's easy for people to grasp. So one of the, the tricks that we've done here in terms of creating a fictional character was expressing the concept of happy contributing people from the lens of Ashanti and her team, Ashanti Muendo and her team and her team members that they had the ability to essentially work for a VR company, virtual reality company, as well as an artificial intelligence company and begin to bring different context about how they are delivering value back to um, the organization called Avant-Garde Reality. So this is the concept of, of how Ashanti actually went through the journey of getting her first C-level job and then building a team to come in and rescue an organization that was really struggling, having a hard time um, satisfying their customers and really delivering value for their customers. Um, and if you've ever used virtual realities in the headset, you would figure out that oftentimes, right, you know, you have some type of motion sickness if you spend too much time within that space with that headset. So that's one of the biggest challenge just that um, Ashanti and her team tackled. Um, but furthermore, she and her team went into the co local community and began to find potential innovators who could really contribute um, to their journey as well. So, you know, th this was uh, uh, an opportunity where Ashanti and her team was able to come up with a new idea called Uwazi. Uwazi was their new company, and it was an idea that was born in the local community and brought that to life. So th that's another concept of how 
we start to bring these ideas together, starting with a, a, a nonfiction book like Deliver Value, right? And then augmenting that fictional book, nonfiction book, with a fictional character to give you a different storyline, something that you can really connect to. But furthermore, as we as I move forward, I said, hey, let's make this a series. Let's make this really fun, right? And, and, um, and, and write about Beyond the Windowsill. That is the second book in the series. And this, this second book really digs into the life of Ashanti. You got to meet her husband, Ayo. Um, you got to meet their chil her two children, you know, Caleb and, um, and Carmel, who are on the spectrum. And, and they also got into the whole concept of technology and how they apply technology um, to their lives and their business as well. Um, fun thing is, is that we, we have uh, Ashanti and her husband moving to the, the, the city of Tucson, Arizona, working at the University of Arizona, where, where I am currently right now. So it's like bringing that story home locally to where I live and looking at this couple, you know, this, this couple who are just coming out of COVID, um, having great success, where Ashanti has great success with, with her um, role as, as a CX level, right, in, in the product development space. And also her husband, who was a researcher and was doing a lot of STEM work. So together, you know, they, they had a great opportunity to, to really begin to share, you know, their knowledge and experience coming into um, a, a smaller market like Tucson, in Tucson, Arizona. But, you know, there's also suspense in this book in Beyond the Windowsill, where we're starting to deal with cybersecurity issues and, and people trying to steal the secrets of, of UWASI and avant-garde realities and, and start to sell that information off um, to a foreign country. Um, we can call it China. Let's just be, be transparent about that. That, that, that was taking place. So a, a lot of the conversation and, and the storytelling in Beyond the Windowsill is, is, is really to help us understand some of the realities that we're faced with, you know, in the markets today and, and in business. Um, so, you know, these books that I've written, um, leading the, the innovation catalyst, leading uh, with empathy and beyond the windowsills, you know, they're really shorter versions, of, uh, short versions of books. They're about 100 pages, right? We like, I like to tell short stories, keep it tight, um, really get to the point, um, and only when it's necessary that you know you go off to 200 plus pages. So these are shorter books, um, and it gives you really great insights um, into the story of Ashanti Nwendo, but also into the, the story of, of working for tech companies and really building products in that space. So it's a space that I live in, and and um, so it's just so much fun to be able to tell that story and bring that forward. But part of the journey, right, um, part of the journey is that also we start to talk about one of the other books that I like to highlight here, since we're here, it's called Belonging and Healing. And it's from the premise that we use the philosophy of Ubuntu. And Ubuntu really means I am because we are, right? And it's that story that we, we learned from Archbishop Desmond Tutu when they were working through the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, and the story of, of how he was trying to bring healing into that country after going through apartheid and some of those difficult times that people struggled with. But in this belonging and healing, it's taking that concept and that mindset and bringing it into the business world. How does that really play out? Um, what does that really look like? Um, so th this is just a, a, another way of looking at how we could use different concepts in our business space and beginning to tell like really powerful stories um, in, in our journey. So this is a great book that if, you know, all of these different books are available on Amazon.com. Um, and if you're down here at the Tucson Festival of Books, you know, come on over to the Dr. Dave Duca. Uh, we have lots of great books here. Uh, this is a great atmosphere to be in. It's fun. 
Um, we have people walking up and down in the mall of, of, of the University of Arizona um, campus. And, and, you know, this is a great learning opportunity. So I just wanted to put that out there, come in and share some um, stories uh, about what's going on. Uh, but I wanted to see if I could get, um, you know, this guy, you know, his name is Dr. Charles Collingwood. And I wanted to see if I could get him to come over and, and talk to me for a second. Um, I, I don't know if he, he wants to come and sit in this chair next to me. You know, Dr. Charles Collingwood, if he was going to come over. I don't know, but, you know, but I, I, I wanted to, to just uh, ask him and maybe create some space for him to, 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 to come and, and uh, you know. I, I think if he sits, like, right about here, I will be able to see him. I, I, I think so, you know. And come and sit in that chair, uh, you know. Don't be afraid. And I, I know he isn't afraid, so, you know, he teaches like a lot of great students um, here in Tucson. So, um, Dr. Charles Collingwood, yes, sir. B, <laughs> thanks for, for, for coming in. Hey, man, talk to me about, you, you, you picked up the book Belonging and Healing today. Um, what, did, what did you get, you know, once you, you picked that book yeah. up? Well, I kind of was just looking at the back of the book, you know, um, up real quick. because I, I, I read a few things that, that was really um, kind of impactful, you know, thinking about how we, we look at uh, our lives and what, what we can do to improve the conditions that we are in, and it all leads to this idea of fixing stuff that we have, right, so the idea of healing, I think is important. Right? Yeah. Because if we want to become a better society, a lot of us have stuff that we need to work on. And you want to feel like you belong. Yes. Right? And if you belong, that means you have to deal with some issues that you have and that you trying to kind of expose, right? And so you could, otherwise you can't deal with it, right? It just happens and it's buried and you never talk about it. So I think that was... That's what I thought from looking at the book and stuff. I think that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, because, you know, you have created this great space of belonging because we even ran into one of one of your students that we had an opportunity yeah, yeah. to share learning with. Moses, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that was fun. Yeah, so I think that's, that's what, uh, when you make those kind of connections with students especially, uh, it's beyond what you do in the classroom, but what happens beyond that, you know? And I think in this case, you have this young brother who just got a fellowship to uh, MIT. MIT, right? yes, he yes. Went to MIT this summer and stuff. And I remember him as a student that he had a potential, but now his potential being realized. I think that's that's powerful. We look at him during the summer of what? What, 20, what, 2019? 2000, yeah, or 18 or 19. One of the two. Right, yeah. Right, right. He yeah. was in a summer program with us. Yeah. And from that point, I knew he was, yeah, he's that guy. Yeah, yeah. I know he's, um, in fact, making great things happen. So what we do is important, you know. Yeah. Don't forget what we do. Right. Great, greatly appreciate you, uh, you know, coming in and supporting the Dr. Dave Duca and, and us just being family. You know, that's really cool stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah. that's Last year was my first time, and I said I'm going to come back, and here I am, you know. So. There you go. Belonging. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Belonging. Exactly. Belonging. Yeah, that's, that's right. Exactly. Great, brother. But, uh, you know, anything else you want to share while we're, like, having this conversation here? Um, yeah, I think, um, especially as, a, as an educator, um, you really have to think about much more than what we do in the classroom for students. We have to make connections that allow them to see um, that what they're learning is just a little, little piece of what they will have to accomplish to be successful later on. You know, so it has to be way more than just teaching mathematics or teaching physics or teaching chemistry. We need to teach them about life. Yeah, in, yeah. What they're going to experience as they leave our classroom. So I think that's important. That's one thing I want people to understand that it's not just teaching your content area, you're going to teach students how to survive in the real world. Right, yeah. 
really important stuff. Uh, and, and a lot of the same thing kind of applies when we deal in the business world as well, right? It's, it's beyond just the, the, the topics of, of business, but it's the human factor, right? Another really important aspect that we need to just tap into. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. All right, man. So We're just in different spaces, right? That, that's it. That's, that's it. it. We're just, well, we're dealing with people at different ages. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. You know, the different you know, what, what I would call different seasons of their lives, yes, right? Yes, yeah, yes, for yeah, sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. But cool, we, have, we have a lot to, uh, I think um, we have a lot to offer based on the experiences that we have, yes, right? And, and yes. I think it's important that we kind of continuously understand that, that we are impacting little people who's going to be big people, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. uh, I think that's important. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, let me just wrap up this podcast here. Um, you know, this is a, a nice segue for us to say, you know, thank you for listening to the Dal Show with Dr. Dave podcast. Then we have Dr. Charles Collingwood who uh, joined us here today, and um, at the Tucson Festival of Books um, over at the Dr. Dave Duca. Duca means shop, by the way. It's a Swahili word for for shop. And, and just to give you a little bit more about that, it, it is that. This is a common practice that you find in many countries, you know, mm -hmm. not just in Africa. Yeah. We grew up in the in the Caribbean, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you would have a little store outside of your home, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right, right outside, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe on the porch or yeah, in the backyard, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So, so that's what a duka is, and so we're bringing that whole concept of a duka to uh, um, the festival of books as well. So, you know, thank you for tuning in, and you know, look forward for us. Oh, we'll be coming back this afternoon. We're going to be looking at uh, Ubuntu Living, which is a card game um, that we created. And so we're having some conversations around that. So uh, with that, you know, thank you for, for listening and we will talk to you soon.
Let's talk about talk, it. Talk, talk, talk. Let's go deep. We all have some share. No share with Dr. Dave. All right. Welcome back to the Now Share with Dr. Dave podcast. Um, here I am again, here at the Tucson Festival of Books here in Tucson, Arizona. I am on the, um, the University of Arizona campus over at the mall of the Tucson Festival of Books. So I'm gonna, today we're going to talk about belonging and healing, um, creating awesomeness for yourself and others. Um, this is one of the books that I've written. And so when we, when we talk about belonging and healing, I would say belonging is a basic human need. And, and you know, for all of us, we all need to feel like we belong somewhere. You know, whether it's in our family, in our communities. And so one of the concepts that we use when I talk about belonging and healing is the concept of Ubuntu, right? And, and so when we think of Ubuntu, it's an African spiritual healing journey followed, you know, by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and former South African President Nelson Mandela. No, in Belonging and Healing, the book Creating Awesomeness for Yourself and Others, one, one thing that I draw upon is the powerful philosophy of Ubuntu um, to deliver the simple roadmap of, of building positive teams and relationships and improving engagement and performance. So some of the topics that we cover in this book, some of the things that you would learn is really the importance of belonging and healing and, and why we all need to belong somewhere. Um, and so the language of belonging and how we can adjust our language to be more inclusive of other people, of different, different walks and different walks of life. Uh, so we can think about how can Ubuntu help you develop successful organization. Also answering the question, how can Ubuntu conquer narcissism and microaggression? Um, this is, you know, we had some good bonus content in this book with, with conversation with uh, coach Nobantu, you know, Empatula of Ubuntu Coaching in South Africa, and also therapist uh, Tracy Tracy of DNS Healing Center. Um, we had some great conversations in this book about healing and belonging uh, and, and the principle of, you know, um, belonging. So I'm, I'm going to just look at the look, look as I'm looking into the book and some of the topics that we're covering, all right? Um, so, belonging and healing, you know, one of the things that we talk about is Ubuntu over narcissism, Ubuntu over microaggression, right? And I'm reading the book right now just to, to bring some context in, you know, um, Ubuntu brings gratitude and Ubuntu creates successful organizations. So we look at those topics as really key things to help us to get better as leaders in, in our organization. So if we answer the question, Right, you know, why is Ubuntu really important? Um, I, I start with uh, you know Ange Maya Angelou, and she said, "I long, as every other human being, to be at home, wherever I find myself. You know, having that longing, that yearning, you know, that desire to, you know, to be, and to be seen and heard and felt. And and so when we experience belonging." There's a sense of acceptance, inclusion, and identity within a specific group. You know, and since we were born, we've always wanted to belong. Everyone has that desire to belong somewhere, right, and bring that forward. So most humans have been guided to belong to their family and community since the time of birth, right? This is something that we always wanted. Um, and, and so we can look at other authors who have talked about, you know, belonging and, and, and healing and so we look at author like Harari of 2015, and he said, he, he thinks of belonging as an intimate community where people know each other well and depend on each other for survival. So just, it just, it just our survival alone is dependent on the belonging, which is really super important um, in, in that journey. Um, so the, the work and the conversation talks about the purpose, the why of belonging. Um, and, and it's like not something that if you're working within an organization, it should not be just the, the work of human resources, HR. We all need to play a part in that journey, right? And so we need to engage people, you know, all people to share positive and negative stories of belonging, 
which which could also help our uh, our acceptance to help to improve acceptance, um, uh, um, also inclusion and, and compassion toward each other. So this book is really talking about how we interact and engage with each other, and, and begin to bring that great sense of value, you know, that we need. So also, what was interesting, you know, as we jump forward, we could talk about the language of belonging. What what, what does that look like? Um, and so, you know, I go back to an old adage of sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never harm me. And I say that's only partially true because language is made up of words and it's important that we use language that could be positive and, um, and really uplifting for other people as part of our journey of, of the language of belonging. So when you think of um, Eleanor Roosevelt, and she said, no one can make me feel inferior without my consent. You know, it's only true when you are in a place of mental and emotional strength where that statement is actually true. Because if you're traumatized, you know, permission, whatever we want to think about, if you're traumatized, you're going to have a hard time being able to say that no one could make me feel inferior without, without their consent. So. Um, this is something else that we're, we're, we're dealing with in the book in terms of um, looking at language, um, in, in terms of what could be really helpful and powerful. Um, and so when I say the language of belonging, so we're talking about a tone of invitation, a voice of acceptance, and a sound of empathy, right, that we're talking about. That's what we're talking about in this book, right? Um, and when we think of the tone of invitation, you know, it's really helping us to say, bring your whole self and you're welcome here. Um, that's part of the conversation that, that we're have, having here. And the voice of acceptance says that you are enough. The sound of empathy rings out that we are envisioning what it's like to be in your shoes. What it's like to walk in your shoes. Which is a powerful thing. And we think of the language of belonging it reverberates with joy and laughter in a core of people receiving invitation, acceptance, and empathy. So it's very much a way for us to connect with each other, very much a way for us to you know, get better at, at things. So one of the, the, the concepts that I wanted to just lean into is a little bit about Ubuntu itself. Right? Um, I, I think it's, it's really important that we understand the, the concept of Ubuntu um, and when, when I think of Ubuntu and, and the way that it's defined by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, he says, a person is a person through other people, through other persons. That's his I, I, uh, definition of Ubuntu, that a person is a person through other persons, through other people. Right? And so when we think of the fundamental meaning of Ubuntu, that it, it is that things we learn and experience are based on relationship with other people. And so I like to think that Ubuntu means I am because we are, or I am because you are, right? And so one, one of the things that the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu was able to do is working through the Truth and Reconciliation TRC a Commission you know, he started the healing process, started the healing process uh, to make, it, make sure that people have an opportunity to come forward and be open about the wrongs that they have committed and give someone also on the other side an opportunity to forgive that other individual, right? And that's the healing part of it. Forgiveness is the healing side of what I'm talking about here. Um, and so that is a really powerful practice that you could have in any type of organization because organizations will not thrive without belonging and healing. Belonging and healing is essential. Um, and so when I say Ubuntu trumps narcissism, you know, and, and because of by its design, it's about equality, you know, between each person and not one person being superior to the other. Right? And when we say Ubuntu over microaggression, 
And so when you think of those microaggressions or these subtle, subtle statements and actions that imply bias against another person, so Ubuntu itself really helps to dampen that down. And then, but also in Ubuntu, Ubuntu as a practice helps to bring gratitude. You know, and we, we're talking practicing the habit of equality with people in your family, community, or organizational organization would ultimately lead to gratitude, right? Of, of, of just being overwhelmed by, you know, narcissism, mic, uh, microaggressions, apathy, fear. Um, this is one good practice that we could put into place and find success, right? And, and so I wanted to, to go in a little further and, and just talk about healing, which is the other side, right? We've, we've talked about belonging and why it's important in the language of belonging. So um, healing is a really important aspect, and we all need it, right? Whether it's physical, mental, um, I mean, emotional, spiritual, I mean, it's really, it, it is something that we all need. So I think it was important for me as I'm walking toward the end of the day here at the Tucson Festival of Books that we, uh, <laughs> you know, we get to understand, you know, what's really important for us, right? Something that, that's really critical um, in, in our side. So one thing I wanted to share before I go any further is that, you know, you could find the Belonging and Healing book in most of my books, you know, um, you know, on, on Amazon.com. Um, I wanted to just share that out. Um, and then also on www.drdaveduca.com as well. You could, you know, find digital versions of the book or you could even order uh, printed versions uh, of the book as well um, so that you could just learn more and grow in the process. It's all a journey. That's what it's all about. Right, and so when I talk, when I think of healing, I'm saying healing is a slow process, and it really takes time for us to metabolize the experiences that we have that affected us physically, spiritually, and mentally. You know, it's really important. So, the healing journey oftentimes is, you know, often is oftentimes a response to trauma, which is the negative experiences that often afflict you know, other people. So this is also another thing that we have to be very mindful of and, and be aware of. So when you think of healing, I think of the concept of the root before the fruit, right? So we can't get fruit unless we have some roots put down for a tree in, or, in order for us to grow. And, and that helps, you know, what we're talking about is that we need solid roots to support, you know, it's just, sustainable opportunity to bear fruit in our healing space, in our healing space, right? And, and so we have to be mindful that we need to, over time, when I said healing is a slow process, over time, we begin to lay down those fruits that allow us to be successful in the process, right? Um, and also you think of healing, it's also just an, an, an antidote to trauma. Um, it is, is important to go through that journey and this process for us to really allow us to metabolize all of the experiences that we have. It's also also the ability for us to respond effectively to things. And, and so one of the, the, the healing power that I like to look into is forgiveness. It's hard. Forgiveness is hard. We know that. It is a tough thing to do. So forgiveness is a powerful state of spiritual, mental, and physical presence that allow us as each as a person to move beyond the trauma experienced. Now, I want to tell you this, that using the healing power of forgiveness is not easy. Um, and we may not be able to actually physically go and tell someone that we forgive them for the trauma they have caused, right? Whether it's you know, someone in our family or community or at work, wherever it is, we may not be able to do that. You know, whether it's fear or anxiety or whatever the stress level it is that, that we're experiencing, it's something that we have to just be mindful of. Um, and so 
When I think of belonging and healing, it's essential for any, for in any organization, in any aspect of our lives, to be able to, to sustain ourselves and be very success, successful. And the goodness is, when you use the principles of Ubuntu and you use forgiveness in the process, they work very well together, right? So these are just very um, important concepts for us to begin to learn more about and you know, look at different ways of how we could experience belonging and healing in our organizations and in our personal life. But so, you know, with that, I just wanted to, as we're winding down the day here over at the Tucson Festival of Books, um, this is an opportunity for you to, you know, go out there and learn more about some of the books that I've uh, put out there and um, about belonging and healing, about delivering value, um, other topics that, you know, I've covered, looking at Ashanti Muendo. Uh, and, and that book series in, in terms of the work of, you know, a woman leading a technology company, and especially a, a woman of color, a black woman leading a technology company that deals with artificial intelligence and virtual reality, having success in that context. Um, there's some spoken word stuff that's out there, that prayers to my Abba Father God, which is a series of, of songs that I've written in the past. but. Songs are spoken word. You could turn them into spoken words, and those are excellent opportunities for you to leverage and use and, and gain knowledge and experience with. So, you know, there's just um, a lot of different goodness that could benefit your life and benefit your, your way of thinking and even just your way of being and how you show up, right, in this experience. So with that, I wanted to say thank you uh, for everything uh, you know, for all the supporters, the people who have supported the work that I'm doing, uh, for the people who are here today at the Tucson Festival of Books in Tucson, Arizona, at the University of Arizona campus. Um, and, and, you know, this is, I just have so much gratitude uh, to, to be here today. So, yeah, this is just so awesome to be able to uh, share my podcast with you. And, yeah, you could find my podcast. You could find it on Spotify. You could find it at Amazon, um, Audible, you know, Google, Apple, and many other ch um, channels. And so you could find the Null Share with Dr. Dave podcast on many of those channels, or you could just look for Null Share with Dr. Dave.com. And um, with that, signing out, and you know, everyone just have an amazing day. Peace.